tell Harold the pastor said hello and behave himself over there today. Well, we're blessed to have my good friend Ken Rosen with us today. He's been a blessing to my life and to my family. How many have uh, seen those pictures of Isaiah on Facebook in that nice firefighter's outfit? Well, that was Brother Ken's, uh, uh, I don't know, gear. Yeah, that was a good word I'm looking for. And uh, so he blessed the kids and blessed us our time in Wisconsin. I'm going back up there sometime. Might even like to take the whole church up just for a getaway at the, at the Dells. I'm looking into that. And, uh, they are just trying to get some of them to work with me on their prices. Amen. But I'm looking into that for this coming summer. It'll be good. And so good that he brought his friend Jackie that I've heard so much about. And. Uh, Ken and Jackie went to Bible school with uh, Brother Daryl Alexander. Amen. So, we're, uh, you know, God just knows how to hook people up with, together, the right people at the right time and the right season. Amen. Well, look at your neighbor and say, "I'm glad I made it here today." I'm glad I made it here today. I'm going to get my blessing, and I'm going to try to share it with those heathens that didn't come. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I, I, I mean, those are all going to totally surprise you all this morning, but we're still on our do-gooder series. Everybody's shocked, I can see. The longest series of my life, and I'm starting to wonder if it's ever going to end. And I, I've been hearing the Lord say, well, it's not really a series, son. It's a way of life. It's how I intended it from the beginning. And uh, I, I'm praying in, I, I believe someone's going to be transcribing these things into a book. I'm just going to tell you that because I believe as we go into the last days, it's going to be the do-gooders. If you don't know what that phrase is, I'll reiterate what that means from my heart here in a little bit. That sparked that end time revival. You know, when everybody's down in the mouth and listen, we are in grave times. We are facing things. We're going to face things. But how many know the New Testament church faced some things? Amen. I mean, they got crucified, uh, boiled in oil and all kinds of things. And it was the goodness of God that drew men to repentance even then. I mean, well, that's still what draws Amen. people to repentance. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, as I talked about when I came from a biker world, those brothers, man, they were true brothers. They would do anything for you and they would do good to you as long as they didn't think you slighted them or did something wrong. And then you were dead. Yeah. See, we should be that way except for, except that he says do a good, especially to those that do us wrong. Mm -hmm. That's when we can start really telling we're Christians. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And, and so that, that requires more than talk. That requires action. How many know it's hard work when you really start deciding you're going to live this stuff out? Mm -hmm. How many's found that it's been great to hear about it, but then when it's, it's been work to actually start being that do-gooder? Amen? And, uh, but I believe that's what it's going to take in these last days to spark that. And uh, let's open in prayer this morning. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, I pray it will bring forth fruit 30, 60, 100 fold this morning. God, you'll give people's ears to hear. Lord, you gave me this word. Lord, I pray it will flow out of me the way that you gave it to me this morning without any hindrances. And you'll get all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 <coughs> and uh, we're going to be talking about Doing good to the broken body. Being do-gooders to the broken body. Do-gooders to the broken body. Everybody got that now? That's where I, you say, well, what is the broken body? Well, how do you know that uh, the church is the body of Christ? And how do you know that it's more broken most of the times than anything else? Amen? And we've learned how to bless our enemies and pray for those. And matter of fact, it's really easy, sometimes easier to do good to somebody we expect to be a chump. But it's real hard work to do good to someone that we have high expectations in. 
and then they let us down. Oh, I've got everybody's attention now, I can see. And so, but we're going to talk about what the, what the Word of God has to say about that. What's it really look like? Because I believe when the church stops eating its own and shows the world that it can... Because listen, it takes a supernatural thing to love somebody when they don't deserve it. And that can only come through letting more of God in us. We must decrease and He must increase. It's the only way to be a true do-gooder. More of the Holy Spirit. More of the Word of God in our, operating through our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. But, you know, the church will eat their own faster than anything. Matter of fact, they're not connected. Most churches show up on Sunday morning, they say hi, bye, have a nice life, and there's no relationship. True church can only function when there's really relationship going on. Amen. Otherwise, you really don't care what that other person's doing. And if you don't care, then you really can't do good unto them. All you can do is talk about them. And the Bible has something to say about that too, and it's not good. Are you all still with me? Yeah. Yep. Because it's not if people get broken in the body, it's when. Yeah. And then how, what are you going to do with them? You know, the, the, word, the Bible never leaves anything to chance. Anybody figure that out? When we say it's a road map, it's a road map for every instance of life. The thing is, if you want to dig enough to find out what it has to say, and then if you want to work hard enough to line up with it. Amen? Amen. So as I, and I'll be honest with you, I've preached some of this a little bit before. And as the Lord laid this on my heart to preach this this morning, I'm going to be honest, I haven't done this with the Lord in a long time. I wrestled with Him. I said, can't you give me anything else other than this to preach this morning? Can I leave something else out? And I finally I said, okay, I'll preach it, but can you at least give me a different angle? Something that's not so uh, uh, smacking them over the head, God. He said, yeah, I can do that. And so we're going to look at it through, through that way this morning. Everybody's on there. And you'll say, Pastor, we've been here. We've been working on this. Well, there's a whole lot of people watching today that maybe haven't. But I'm here to tell you that as we grow as a body, it's not if you get hurt, it'll be when. And you better, you better pray that there's some things you got in line and you better figure out now Amen. how you're going to respond. Because it'll be vital during that season for you and those around you. Okay. And you're going to make your mind up now if you're going to be a do-gooder or not. You don't wait till you get into something to decide if you're going to be a do-gooder. It doesn't work that way. You'll do whatever you want if you haven't already put your spirit man in check to line up with the word. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Some of you are like, well, he gets us some word already. <laughs> well, I will. Turn to Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Most people love this verse. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. There will be a quite a bit of word this morning because we'll be talking about some sensitive things. Everybody there say amen. Amen. It says, therefore, as long as we have the opportunity, somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm sucking air. I'm sucking air. I've got opportunity. <laughs> therefore, as long as we have opportunity... Let us do good unto those that do good unto us. Is that what it says? Let us do good unto everyone. Now, we covered this in the first part of our do-gooder series, did we not? We decided that even those we don't like, we, that we don't get along with, he told us to do good unto them. Not check their motives, not decide if we agree with them or not. He told us to do good unto them. Those that render us evil were to do good unto them. Right? Right? That's what a do-gooder looks like. Now, we're not to be mowed over and, and walked on. There's things about that. But that does not mean that we, you know, usually in America you have a checklist. Okay, you cross that one, that one, that one, I'm done. And that's not what he's called us to be. And when we start lining ourselves up, we'll start showing, showing people something that's supernatural that can only happen when God is alive in us. Right. Amen? Amen? Amen. Some of you are like, he's already preached this. What do you get on with it? Let us do good unto everyone, especially unto those who are of the household of faith. Now, we, we touched this, right? Now, sometimes you would think that would be easier. 
to do good to those that are of the household of faith, right? How many have found that you get along with everybody in your family? <laughs> Did you know that you probably aren't going to get along with everybody in the household of faith, but he told you to do good unto them? And, and do you know I found that uh, some of the most difficult ones to deal with can be those that are in the household of faith. They just, they just are. I found some of the most, because, you know, hurting people hurt people. And unfortunately, a lot of hurting people hide in the church because they're still broken. Remember, we're talking about being do-gooders to the broken body. Come on, are you following this more? Yep. <laughs> so he said, especially to the household of faith. We're to do good unto them. Amen? Amen. Now, do you know what? Before I can know somebody, I have to have a relationship with them. Remember when we talked about being a do-gooder to the household of faith? That means you're going to have to get messy and actually let people into your life. And in, in today's society, we've learned to shut everybody out. But in order to be a true do-gooder, that means you're going to have to take some risk, open yourself up, let people into your life that you normally wouldn't let in, and then even do good unto them, knowing they just might do something brain dead. <laughs> And hurt you and love them anyways <laughs> come on are you with me this morning yeah. now do you want to see something really interesting about this verse anybody ready to see something sure. go right on up to uh, verse 1 everybody there say amen yeah. if any brethren if anyone is overtaken in a fault Ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And then it goes on to talk about fornicators and those that's doing all kinds of atrocities. Now today, we take those people when they're caught and we, we stone them. You say, we don't stone people anymore. Yeah, we do. We, just, we stone their character. <coughs> we destroy everything about them. And we beat them into shame somewhere and leave them to that. And we just pray nobody finds about out about our stuff. Yeah. I'm preaching this morning. You want to talk about who he wants you to do good to. Now notice he laid out some, some precursors here that are pretty pretty strong. One, he said, those that are spiritual among you. He didn't say those that thought they were. He said, and we're going to look at this more, what he's saying here in a minute through some other verse. But he's saying, he's not saying those that think they've got it together. He's saying those that are mature enough that, that, that have been through some things. Come on. That can walk in love with this brother, this sister, and say, yeah, you made a mess. Yeah, you're going to have to deal with some things, but I love you enough because I've risked it to have a relationship with you that I'm going to do my best to restore you back unto God, and I'm going to point you the way you're supposed to go, and I'm going to do good unto you, even though right now you deserve a spanking. But if it wasn't for the grace of God, there I'd be also. And when I was there sometimes, somebody helped me along out of that way. See, this is what we're talking about, doing good even to the body of Christ. What if we started putting this into the house of God? What if we start putting this into the body of Christ? Do you see where this might become a revival? Well, you see, this, this, this might start changing some things. I believe not only has God called us to do good, He's, he's calling us to grow up. Amen. It takes mature believers to be spiritual enough to deal with broken people. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, notice he didn't say, at, at this point in time, he didn't say, Thank you. put a big X on their forehead so everybody stays away from them. <laughs> Mark that person. Be you not among them. At this point in time, he's not saying that. But I wanted to tell you that his... His, his, his focus, no matter what you go, doesn't change. It's to restore. He came to restore you, and until He comes back again, He's working to restore people. And we're His hands and feet. If we're talking, if we're doing something, it should be to restore somebody. Amen? So, 
Now, has anybody ever met somebody that's in meekness? Yeah. I mean, they just have a real oh, calm, gentle spirit about them, and they'll just, you know, walk in love, unless you are in complete rebellion, and then they'll go on to the next parts we're talking about in love. But that's another. Oh, that's another part. But you ever met that? Are y'all all getting an idea? See, listen, this is a little bit different than the type of do-gooder we're talking about. This is really getting involved in somebody's life. Now, we're not supposed to get involved in other people's lives. Whatever they do, they do. That's between them and God. That's not what this is saying, is it? Now, did it say for you to get in there and fix them? No, God's supposed to fix them. But you're supposed to love them through it and point them in the right direction. Amen? Yeah. All right. Turn with me. We're, gonna, we're just going to jump in uh, to the middle of a mess. Praise God. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 and 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 and 6. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned. That means you're full of pride. You have not repented. You've not turned, even though you've been caught dead in sin. Big smile. That you have done this deed may have taken away among you. Uh, for verily, uh, as absent in the body, but present spirit have judged already as though I was present. Now, did Paul just say he already judged the matter? I believe he did. But see, is, is Paul judging it in a way that's saying, I'm putting an X on you and marking you? No, he's not. Not at this time. We're going to see what the point is here in just a second. Are you all still with me? In mm -hmm. uh, the name, so his present spirit of judgment already as though I was present, him has so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you gather together in my spirit, the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, let such a one be delivered unto Satan, for the destruction of the flesh. Now, most of the time, everybody gets that point. All right, we've tried our best to restore them in meekness. We've walked in love. We've done all the things. And this brother will not repent. He will not come out from underneath this thing. He's in rebellion. And the Bible says mark them and don't even eat with them. But the point is, is not to shame them. The point is just to realize what it was like to be in the presence of God. But you first have to have communion. You first have to have community to realize you would even miss it. And we don't even have that really going on today that well in the body of Christ. Are you with me? But the whole point is, is for restoration. Now it takes a long time to get there, but most people jump past the restoring and meekness part and everybody jumps to this part, but they don't they miss the second half of this verse. Are you with me? Especially in old times, everybody wanted to really hammer them down. And then we went so far to the other side, well, we just love everybody, but we're not doing good to them if we're letting them destroy their life. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. So then it goes on to say, <laughs> Glory to God. Let such a one be delivered unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glory is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And just a little bit of the stuff in the house of God will make a mess. But the point is, is that he, you turn someone over to be buffeted so that they'll get sick of the pain and come back to God and realize just how good they have it to be restored. And that's a last ditch effort. But how many you know, it's no fun being that do-gooder. It's no fun. Because see, you're going to have to stay connected to that person. You don't just get to wash your hands and say, I'm done with you. You're out of here. That's not what it's saying here. Come on, are y'all with me, church? You're never going to heal broken people that way. It's going to hurt. Hurting people hurt people. 
Some of the most restored people now that I, I have the, 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 the blessings of, of being their spiritual dad were some of the ones that said the dumbest things to me and hurt me in ways that was unbelievable on their way to being restored. And now we have a good laugh about it because we've seen it through. Everybody's trying to figure out if it's you. Don't quit all that. <laughs> Glory. Moving along for time's sake. I know I'm doing more teaching than preaching this morning. Y'all ready to get to the meat? Are you? Well, one more before we get there. Then I'm going to really start preaching. Turn to Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 and 6. Every unbeliever in the world knows this first verse that I'm about to quote. Anybody you meet that's done anything wrong, I can quote you this first verse, but they have no context of what it means. Do you know what it says? Judge not that ye be not judged. Everybody wants to tell you that. Everybody. Who are you to judge me? Well, you know, here's the key. If you're doing it in a judgmental, cold-hearted manner, they're probably telling you right. But if you're being a do-gooder with the heart of God wanting to do good unto them, you have every right because your intention is to restore. Come on. I, I hope you all are getting this this morning because this is good stuff. Amen. So it says, For with the judgment which ye judge, you shall be judged. And with the measure which ye measure, you should be measured again. And why is do thou behold the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but doest not consider the beam that is in thy own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote of thy eye, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye? Thou hypocrite. What's a hypocrite? Someone that's telling somebody else what is wrong when they're not cleaning up their own mess. Now, remember we talked about the ones that were spiritual, restored? Y'all with me? See, somebody that's already cleaned up their own house that's taking the beam out of something else. You know, if you've never dealt with uh, certain types of addictions or other kinds of things, then you're probably not the best one to tell somebody else how to get how to overcome that thing. If you've never had, had a deadly disease that was trying to kill you, you can still speak faith to them. But maybe you're not mature enough really to deal with them. Maybe you'll say something dumb to them. Big smile. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? But if you've dealt with that thing, then when you're judging them, you're judging them with compassion. You're looking to see what's broken so that you can fix it, not so that you can beat them. Are y'all seeing the difference this morning? Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about, we're not, no, we're not the fixers, but we are the prayers. We are His hands and feet. We are the ones that can do good unto them. If we're listening and letting the Holy Spirit guide us, are you with me? Yes. So now we, we see, you know, it, it, I've been through some things, you know. And I, it, it, it don't take long to look around and see, and you can see what's broken. And you know, the, you, people don't always get there overnight. But you do good unto them. Restoring them in neatness. Loving them. Guiding them. Discipling them. Being a do-gooder unto them. You know, and I found the ones that are in the worst shape don't even know they have anything going on. Yep. They think they're just picture perfect. All puffed up like that other guy. Bless God. When it says Christian in the Bible, there's a picture in the, in the big cherry, there's a picture of my face right by it. I'm the best thing that ever came to sliced bread. <laughs> and you you laugh, but You'd be shocked how many people in the body of Christ have that kind of heart. I believe God is just, He's calling us to be do-gooders, especially to the broken. Come on, are you with me? Yeah. And you're going to find more broken people inside the body of Christ that don't even really know who He is than you can ever imagine. And they're going to be, they're going to be mean. They're going to be hurt. They're going to be ugly. They're going to, you know what? Broken Chains Church. We we kind of get people that come in here that are broken that have chains on them. And we come and a lot of times they don't stay very long. They'll fill the house, they'll get broken, set free, delivered, and then they move on. That's gonna change, but it always still will remain the same. 
but that means you're going to have to deal with some things in your own life. And sometimes God's dealing with, there's things God took me through, big beams of my eye, that had nothing to do with me. But as I met people later on, I was able to do good unto them because I stood through that trial. I stood through that thing. And it was able to minister to somebody else. Amen? Amen. And I was able to start doing good unto them. You know? And there's been times in my life that all I could do was keep my mouth shut and if there any wrong done, let, not, not let it be on me. <laughs> that was all I was capable of. Come on. That was me doing good under that. <laughs> we'll get it in a minute. So it says, uh, Give not which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend them. It also means that you're going to come across people that are so broken that are not ready to receive the things that you hold, hold dear to you because you're doing good to them. And you're going to have to wait just like that demonic girl that I believe that followed Paul around for three or four days. Some would say, why did he put up with that? I believe the Lord spoke to me. He said because he was, Paul was preaching the word and the word was dropping into that young girl's spirit. So he could rebuke that demon any time, but he was more interested in restoring that young lady. So when he got rid of that demon, she could receive the word of God that he'd been speaking and was saved. See, sometimes you're going to have to put up with some things from them for a little bit while you're dropping the word of God in. Don't just dump all your pearls on them. All, all this stuff that's close to your heart that God's changed in you just right away as you're doing good unto them. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? Yes. Because then they're going to turn and they're going to, sometimes they're just going to trample and you're just going to be crushed. You're going to say, well, Lord, I heard you. I know you told me to minister to this person. God, I know they're wounded, but man, <laughs> I didn't leave nothing left. And the Lord said, hey, there's a season for everything and this wasn't the season to share that. You're just supposed to love them right now. You got to work on getting some love, some, some, some fluid movement back in that heart. It's stone right now. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Are y'all getting something out of this? Yes. Glory to God. All right. Last verse this morning. Last chapter. Amen. Turn to Luke chapter 5. Everybody here will recognize this right off. Luke chapter 5. We're going to talk. As a, How many remember my message on a crazy faith, friends? Well, the Holy Ghost changed it a little bit. He said they were also crazy do-gooders. And we're going to look at this this morning. See, well, let's just read the word. And I'm going to. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before them. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the mist before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, they are healed. Get up off your bed. Is that what he said? Yep. No, he said, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Remember that. And then the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their thoughts, answering, said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? For it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch and go into thy house. And there's another verse where he looks up at the man in Matthew and he says, By your faith, his sins are forgiven, he is made whole. And so, you all have heard my message on that. You know, we all find ourselves in a place sometimes where things are out of order like we're talking about the broken body. Come on, are you with me? See, this man found himself on a bed. And some would say he didn't have any faith. 
if you've got enough faith to let your four friends drag you all the way to some meeting and climb up on a roof, you've got enough faith left to trust them even if you don't know what's going on. You may not have enough faith to connect to the one that you need to connect to. We all have the measure of faith anyways. Please don't misquote me this morning. We all have a measure of faith. That means a five-gallon bucket only takes one seed. You already have all that you need. Are you all still with me? Yeah. Yep. So his crazy faith friends saw him in a need, and they did whatever it took to get him there. You know, today if we show up to a church and, uh, you know, this place has been full before, and everybody showed up, the streets are full, the house is full. Well, we heard the anointings flowing, and Pastor Brother, they're, they're getting dead people raised, and the wheelchairs are coming up, and we've seen some of the things around here. Amen? So they're saying, so they want to get them in there. And, you know, today we say, we'll try next week. They were like, no, we're getting him in there now. The anointing's flowing now. And they cut the hole in and let him down. And he was saved and delivered. And I just want to bring this around. See, God wants us to be do-gooders to the broken body. Because there's something God's pointed out in this scripture that he quoted here this morning. See, this man had let sin in his life. The same way those that he talked about restoring and let some things in. We're all human, right? And it wasn't the sin that stopped him. It was the puffed up and the unforgiveness that stopped him. Are you with me? Yep. And so these do-gooders saw that this man was broken. And they could have said, if he won't repent, let him lay there in it. He's getting what he deserves. Come on. But that isn't what they said, is it? They said, come on, grab it. Man, if except for it be the grace of God, it could be you or me. Let's go get him to the house. Let's go get him to Jesus. Let's get him where the anointing's flowing. And they, they, and they did whatever it took to get him in the house. Those do-gooders. <laughs> and they, they, they ripped open that house and they're letting him down. <laughs> and as they're letting him down... <laughs> Jesus saw him, and it was because of their faith. This man was in no place to make a connection. His life was out of order. But those men that brought him, they were in a spiritual place. They were spiritually mature. And they were do-gooders that could restore him in meekness. And they brought him to the Master. <laughs> and he saw their faith. He said, by your faith. He looked at that man. He said, your sins are forgiven. Get up off your bed and rise and walk. See, he had to take care of the sin first before he took care of the physical body. He's still doing that today. But they'll never repent. They'll never get to a place where they're humble enough until you are willing to go to the broken in the body and love them when they're in a mess. Love them when they don't deserve it. This guy might have done who knows what. That's not our place to decide. It's our job to do good unto them. And I promise when you start doing that, revival will break forth. Is it easy? No. No. It's not. But it's so worth it. Because let me tell you, those, those four do-gooders, they're still getting talked about today. And they didn't do it for their glory. But they were made famous because they restored somebody in meekness. It's really easy to count the things. And it may be even do easy to do good to those in the world that don't deserve it. But he said especially do good to those in the household of faith. And he went on to list some atrocities. Come on. Now, there is a time, Lord forbid, that sometimes you've got to turn them over to Satan to be buffeted. And I've had to turn a few over. But let me tell you, it was never joy in my heart when they went that way. It was heartbreaking. But there was always hope that they would come back to God. There's still hope that they'll come back to God. And I, and no matter what they say about me, no matter what they do to me, I've kept the door open so that if they ever want to come back, they can come back. Come on. And I want to do good unto them. I haven't kept no record of their wrong because my goodness, what if God kept a record of mine? And I'm going to do good unto them. See, we're going to get all kinds. Of, and sometimes we're going to get a lot of people in here. They've been broken elsewhere. And you're going to have to clean up somebody else's mess. 
And they're going to take stuff out on you that you didn't even have anything to do with. And you're going to do good to them anyways. They're going to love them anyways. Amen? And you're going to let them into your life and they're going to make a mess. You know, and I'll just be honest. I didn't think I was going to share this today. I'm really good when it's just me. I've been doing this a long time. I know how to be a do-gooder on this level. I can even share my wife. I'm a little protective though. You know, don't hurt my wife. You can hurt me, but don't hurt my wife. See, we get in that mindset sometimes. As we talk, but then there's, don't tear touch my kids. I'm going to come out on you. But you know what? I've been faced in a lot of situations where my kids get hurt. But you know, I have to trust God that He's going to do what He said He would do. And He does. With my kids. And I'm going to do good unto them. You know, this may seem simple to some. Y'all remember our big bash we had two years ago with the slides and the fist fights? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we had like, I spent more time restraining gang members than I did. But I was thankful for all the training. Amen. And when the one boy popped little Isaiah right upside the head with his fist, and you know, Isaiah came up and said, Daddy, I don't know what I did to him. I was nice. I don't know why he hit me. My first reaction, well, I'm going to be honest, was to yank him up by the hair of his head and have him come to Jesus talk with him. <laughs> but you know what? I didn't because, you know, but if I would have let that spirit come out, he would have. But I didn't. I, there was more of the spirit of God in me. And I loved on that boy and I talked with him and praise God, the Holy Spirit smart. He sent Pastor Tammy by to talk to that young man and <laughs> sent me on my way. <laughs> And we've seen whole families come to the Lord because we loved them. There's kids still coming here. They come sporadically. But when you notice when they come now, they're not all crazy. Because we put structure and love in. Was it hard work? Yes. It was hard work. And there was times I'd rather not do it. But we did good under them. And sometimes doing good isn't just Sappy, oh, I love you. Sometimes doing good is holding someone accountable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes doing good is, is, is walking them through when they're in a mess, but taking them where they need to go and telling them the truth so they can repent and turn and be restored. Oh, y'all are seeing it now, huh? And that's not always easy, but it's always right. Amen? Mm -hmm. To say, hey, you kind of missed it over here. You say, what if they won't let you get close enough to them but you can see it? Then you keep building a relationship until they will. And you pray for them and don't you dare judge them. And if you ain't been, if you haven't dealt with it yourself, if you're not mature enough, you better stay away till you grow up and because you don't you'll make a mess. Big smile. Everybody getting what I'm saying? Yep. Some of you are saying, well, how do I know if I'm ever mature enough? You'll know because you'll be able to love them when you really want to snap their head off. <laughs> oh, come on, can I, get an, can I get a testimony this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm about done this morning. About done. Short message to the point. Brother Kevin says, I don't mean nothing. I do not believe. He does not believe the pastor's <laughs> done this quick and no jumping and shouting. I see it all over his face. I really felt like I've done what I said. And you know what? I think some of you are dealing with it. For one, it's hard to let people into your life. It's messy. But I'm going to tell you, if we're going to win souls for Christ, if we're really, it's a go ye gospel. If we're going to do it, we're going to have to let people in. We're going to have to be do-gooders. Amen? Amen. It means you're going to have, and you're going to have to let your church family in. You're going to have to have a church family. Doesn't mean you give up your family. You just work on getting them to be a part of your church family. Amen? God has called us to be do-gooders. Right now I'm building on a month and a half series. So when I say that, it carries a lot of weight. Are you with me? 
because we've, we've studied where as we go through that, he's going to fill us with joy and peace and hope. Ooh, okay. And, you know, all these things we're going to take with us. That's what the Word says. And as we go, they're going to follow us and they're going to be imparted into people mm -hmm. around us. Mm -hmm. And where things are once dead, they'll start coming back to life. But they operate out of when your heart gets in the right place and you start becoming a do-gooder. Mm -hmm. That's how those things start flowing from you. If it's dried up, it's because something is in your heart that's blocking that from flowing. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Lord, let's, let's pray. Lord, we come before you today, God. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I pray it'll bring forth fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. Lord, I pray you, God, we all need to grow. We all, we, we are all always maturing. And Lord, I thank you today that we're maturing more and to be more do-gooders of you. And Lord, I thank you that you're preparing this house for a move of God. God, that there's already a move, but there's a stronger move that's coming. And Lord, you're bringing in the broken and the hopeless and, and those that are bound up in religion and religious things. And God, you're preparing us to love them right where they are. And Lord, I thank you for the strong work that you're doing. And God, we give you the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Does anybody need special prayer this morning? Going once. Let me play something, Sister Betty. Uh -huh. Thank you for being obedient. I was